Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, October 21st, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Uh, tonight at 7, we have our elder board meeting. The elders are going to start work on the church budget for 2025. Appreciate your prayers. This is a difficult task always, and uh, the elders do a great job of it, but it is, uh, it's challenging. And for me, it, numbers are not my thing, so it's, it's, a, it's challenging for me to think through how to best do that. Um, and yeah, uh, Rachel is unfortunately out of the office today. She's not feeling well, so appreciate your prayers. Also means I'm answering the phone. So if a phone call happens while I'm recording, I'll have to stop to pick it up. I actually did that twice a couple of minutes ago and had to restart the whole video. So uh, it's just the way it goes. Um, on Sunday, I preached a sermon out of the Stump the Chump series. Someone had submitted a question asking, how can I share the gospel with my Muslim family and friends? I was wondering what that... Uh, bright light is there. It's actually the sun. <laughs> Maybe it's coming off of this clipboard. There we go. Uh, how, can I sh how can I witness, how can I share the gospel with my Muslim family and friends? And so I preached out of uh, Acts chapter 17. Acts 17 is a sermon that the Apostle Paul preached to the people of Athens at the Areopagus. And I noted, one of the things I noted is that there's not a lot of examples in the New Testament of what Christian preaching was like during uh, the first century. Um, there's a lot of mentions that they preached, but not a lot of sermons that are recorded word for word or even thought for thought in, uh, in the New Testament. Now, there are a few, and so I want to just sort of highlight what some of them are. There's, there's more than I'm listing here, but Jesus certainly preached a few times, and we preached a lot, but of course we have examples, a few examples of Jesus' sermons. The biggest and most uh, famous example being the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7. That's a lengthy sermon with a lot of different topics. Um, the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost filled with the Holy Spirit, preached a sermon to the gathered crowd in Jerusalem. Also in Acts chapter 10, he preached to the family of Cornelius and Cornelius the centurion um, when they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Acts also includes a sermon by Stephen, uh, the deacon who was put on trial for his preaching of the gospel. And he gives a sermon that walks through the whole Old Testament to make the point that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, the Apostle Paul preaches a sermon in Antioch in Acts chapter 13. That's a great sermon. And of course, the, the sermon that I talked about yesterday in Athens out of Acts chapter 17. These are some of the sermons in the New Testament. There's probably another 10 or so sermons in the New Testament, but not as many as you might think. Um, what do I mean? I guess part of the question is what constitutes a sermon? Stephen on trial in Acts chapter 7 goes through the Old Testament point by point and makes the, this uh, case for Jesus being the Messiah that, that the, the uh, people who were putting him on trial had crucified. Um, is it a sermon? In, in my Bible, it's, he it's headlined uh, Stephen's speech. And a, is a sermon a speech? Well, sermon is a type of speech. Here, here's how I think about sermons. Uh, this is out of the Old Testament, but I, I love this passage. It's out of the book of Nehemiah, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. It says, All the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard, on the first day of the seventh month. Just a uh, momentary pause there. Uh, men and women are listening to this sermon. I, I guess they had children's church, right? It's like the children weren't there. So I guess the children were, were dismissed to children's church. Uh, just a joke. And he read from it face, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. It's a long sermon, right, from early morning until midday. And Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, 
Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maaseiah on his right hand, and Pedaiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam on his left hand. And like I always say, the thing with these uh, names in the Old Testament is you just got to pretend like you're confident about pronouncing them because who knows how they're really pronounced. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Maaseiah, Kelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peleah, the Levites helped the people to understand the law while the people remained in their places. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. This is my best understanding of what it means to preach, right? They're here, they have a service where they bring together all the people. Um, there's prayer, right? Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and the people answered, Amen, Amen. There, this is a prayer to God. They bow their heads, they worship the Lord, so this is some time of worship, and uh, two things after that happened. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. When I preach, my goal is to read the scripture clearly and to give the sense so that you understand what the reading means. That's really it. <laughs> um, to, to read it and to give the sense, uh, to explain it. Uh, that's what my sermons are all about. Um, because my goal in preaching, and I think the goal in, in all Christian preaching should be, to help people understand the word of God. Because what we want is for people to hear from God, not for people to hear from Pastor Danish House at New Beginnings uh, in Poughkeepsie. Uh, I'm a fun guy. I'm a smart guy. I'm a clever guy. I've got. I've thought a lot of things through. I'm worth listening to. I think. Uh, I speak a lot, and I like listening to myself. So maybe that's some pride there. But I, I enjoy. I enjoy hearing from me. Uh, but the truth is, if you have a choice between hearing from me and hearing from God, pick God. Right. I mean, no brainer. Right. Uh, on a Sunday morning, what you want to hear from is God, not from me. And so, so my goal is to, and when I'm preaching, is to not have you hear me, but to have you hear God. And not that, in, in the right sense, right? Not in the sense that I want you to treat my words as if my words are the word of God. No, I want you to treat God's words as the word of God. And, uh, and I want to get out of the way of God doing the thing that he wants to do. Ideally, my goal is that you would leave a service at New Beginnings thinking that was a great passage and God is a great God, much more than you leave saying, well, that pastor is a great preacher. Um, so I try not to use a lot of sort of rhetorical tricks. I do use some humor. I hope that's okay. But, um, but I'm trying not to use rhetorical tricks. I'm not trying not to sort of bedazzle people with with uh, overabundance of kind of uh, logic or uh, crazy things that sort of uh, are, are human dependent. What I want to give you is the sense of what this passage actually teaches and what it actually means. That's the hope. That's the, my prayer when I get in the pulpit. And you know, I think sometimes I succeed better than others, but... Uh, but the goal is that you would hear from God on a Sunday morning. Um, that's what I pray for. That's what I'm shooting for. And I hope that's what you're hoping for as well. I hope that what you're listening for is to hear the voice of God rather than the voice of Pastor House. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you so much for your grace in our lives. Thank you that you speak to us through your word. Lord, I pray that you would bless the preaching of your word here at New Beginnings and everywhere else where your word is preached. May your word find good soil in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, 
so that they might uh, turn to you and be saved. Lord, I lift up our elder board meeting tonight. I pray that you'd bless uh, the elders as they gather to work on the budget. I pray that you would uh, give us wisdom and insight and faith about the future. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing here at New Beginnings. We pray your blessing on our church as we share the gospel with, with people in our community. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. Uh, I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.